So, now, this brings us up to the 15th century in Punjab. By this time, the people of Punjab were very diverse. In the northwest, stretching along the Indus, were the warring tribes of the Islamic faith, and the northern fringe running along the foothills of the Himalayas were the domains of Hindu princes who had fled to the plains due to the Muslim onslaughts. Here, the Hindu princes burnt incense to the gods, preserved the society in which Brahmin and Kshatriya exploited the lesser castes. In the rest of Punjab, the countryside was inhabited by Juts and Rajput agricultural tribes, while in the cities they were inhabited by trading Banyas, Mahajans, Suits and Auroras. So we can begin to see this caste system develop. cities, towns and villages, there were these dark-skinned descendants, the aboriginals who were considered beyond the caste system. They were forced to do the dirtiest work and then condemned as untouchables. In addition to these were some nomadic tribes of gypsies wandering across the plains with their donkey caravans and their hunting dogs and herds of sheep and goats. Until the 15th century, the Punjab had only two important cities, Lahore, which was the seat of most governments, and Multan in the south, which had a busy market dealing with commerce coming up from the rivers from Sindh and the caravans from Persia. And then up to the 19th century, they had big forests in Punjab. They teemed with wildlife, including lions, tigers, leopards, wolves, and many varieties of deer. The Punjab being the main gateway to India, was a perpetual field of battle and the first home to all conquerors. A few invaders actually, if any, brought their wives with them, so most of them who settled actually acquired the local women in their conquered domains. Thus the blood of many conquering races came to mingle and many alien and foreign languages, for example Arabic, Persian, Pashto, Turkish, came to be spoken in the land of Punjab. So the aboriginals of the land who were already there were subjected to the Vedanic, Jain, Buddhist religions of the Aryans and to the Islamic faiths of the Arabs, Turks, Mongols, Persians and Afghans who came. So out of this mixture that we can see of blood and speech were born the Punjabi people and their language. There also grew a sense of expectancy that out of the many faiths of the past and of their ancestors would be born a new faith specifically for the people of Punjab itself. So we can really see a settlement of all of these cultures coming together and a nationalism start to develop as people want to have affinity to their homeland as the generations progress. So the spirit of Punjabi nationalism first manifested itself in the Madja region, the heart of Punjab, and among the people who were deeply rooted in the soil. Although the founders and many of the leaders of the movement were not agriculturalists, its backbone was the Jut peasantry of the central plain and they were agriculturalists. The Jut's home was the northern plains of India and they were of Aryan descent. They brought with them certain institutions, the most important being the Panchayat, an elected body of five elders to which they pledged their allegiance. Every Jut village was a small republic made up of people of kindred blood. They were as conscious of absolute equality between themselves as they were of their superiority of men of other castes who earned their livelihood as weavers, potters, cobblers or scavengers. So you can see this class divide starting to develop within the Punjab. So the relationship of a Jat village with the state was that of a semi-autonomous unit. They would pay the state a fixed sum of revenue. These Punjabis living in the village would plough their fertile lands, but at the same time, they would have a sword girdled around their waist, ready to defend their villages from foreign invaders, and they would inevitably come as they had centuries before. By the end of the 15th century, the different races who had come together in the Punjab had lost their nostalgic memories of the land of their birth, and they began to develop an attachment to the land of the Punjab. 
The growth of our Punjabi consciousness was the evolution of one common tongue from a babble of languages. Although the Punjabis were sharply divided into Muslims and Hindus, attempts have been made to bring about an understanding between the two faiths, and a certain desire to live along each other had grown amongst the people. It was therefore left for Guru Nanak and his nine successors to harness that Punjabi spirit and shape the Punjab in a direction that had never been seen before, in more of a direction of peace and equality. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to keep a clear story, however in reality there's a whole lot of history that I didn't get to mention. For example, the rise and evolution of Hinduism and Islam and how it affected the people of Punjab. But maybe that can be left for another time. So I hope I pronounced the names correctly as well because some of them were quite challenging. But yeah, it was really interesting to learn a bit about the prehistory before the main religion of Sikhism and how all the cultures, languages came into Punjab and exactly how this culture and spirit that we know today had evolved. So thank you very much for listening.